If you guys are on the baseball side of TikTok and Instagram, you've probably seen this video. <sighs> That's why today I'm going to be showing you guys how to break in a glove the proper way. If you guys end up enjoying this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment what you guys want to see in future videos. All right, let's get it. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on my custom Rawlings outfield glove, which I got last year. This is a Rawlings Pro 6019-22. The dash 22 means that it has a trapeze web, and I actually have a pretty similar glove, which is my very first Rawlings Heart of the Hide. It's a Pro 6019 with dual core tech. This is a 10-year-old glove, I wanna say, but I got it about five or six years ago. It's broken in, great form, great glove but this form could be better. That's why I wanna break this glove in, like that one, but just way better. Guys, the biggest thing that you don't wanna do when you get a brand new glove is to not pancake it. The way that that guy was breaking in the glove was probably just how he was shown because he looked like he was just a uh, Dick Sporting Goods employee. So he probably doesn't actually know how to break in a glove. That's why he was taking a mallet and just crushing the glove and hitting it like this. <sighs> don't do that, guys. A mallet isn't even the number one way to break in your glove. This absolutely helps, but at the end of the day, it's just a tool. The best thing you could do for any single glove out there is to actually just play catch. But I'm gonna show you how to properly use this mallet. If you're gonna mallet your glove like the guy in the video, I would advise to take a softball or a baseball to put in the pocket. Um, it doesn't really matter which kind, it just depends on how big you want the pocket to be. I would alternate between the two, so, so sometimes I would use a baseball and sometimes I would use a softball. Put a softball or a baseball in the pocket, close your glove and mallet just like that. And then you wanna take the other side and mallet that side. You wanna do that over and over again until you break in the heel. I think the most popular player right now that has a glove just like this one is Harrison Bader. He's on the Cardinals and he has a bunch of really cool rolling trapeze gloves. And, oh, Mike Trout as well. Oh my God, what am I saying? Recently, Chris Banger did a video on Mike Trout's trapeze glove. And the way Mike Trout and even Harrison Bader break in their gloves is, since the 6019 is already a pretty narrow model, they don't necessarily flare the thumb and pinky too much. They just pull this apart like that. Outfield gloves should be wide. They should be nice and open. For example, my very first Rawlings trapeze glove is very open. It came narrow, it came like this but it's very open now, it's very wide. Some guys like narrow outfield gloves, but I like my gloves to be a little bit more wider. I feel like I have more reach, a better chance of catching the ball. I'm not gonna flare this one too much because it just looks beautiful like that. So I might end up giving it a form kind of like, maybe like that, nothing too crazy. The reason I like the trapeze gloves so much is because they look super sick. I mean, come on, dude, like this glove looks awesome. And also the pocket that these gloves form, since it has a six finger trapeze, the web and the pocket and the palm of the glove, they're all one piece. So it actually forms a really, really deep and really consistent pocket. So that ball actually just wants to fall right there in the pocket. Super deep pocket, amazing, completely swallows the ball. And that's the pocket I wanna have on my brand new Rawlings. Another thing you can do to break in the heel of the glove, and this goes for any glove, is to massage the heel like this. That's gonna break up the heel even more and it's not gonna damage your glove. Um, a lot of people, they're really slow with breaking in their gloves and they're really hesitant to do it. So they think they're not doing a good job. But in reality, gloves can take a lot more beating than we actually think they can, especially the higher end brands. Don't be afraid to manipulate the leather, stretch it out, roll it around. Don't be afraid to do that, guys. Something else I wanted to bring up, guys, is a really big issue that a lot of people have when breaking in a brand new glove. And that is bubbles and creases in the palm. The number one cause for bubbles and creases in the palm is actually when you try to squeeze a glove before trying to break it. When you have a super stiff glove and you try to squeeze it before the heel is broken in, it's just gonna push the leather out from the pinky and middle finger area. It's just gonna push it out and you're gonna get a bubble. Now it's true, some gloves do come with a bubble. Um, I recommend just, you know, beating it out with a mallet or some hot water, but again, the best way to avoid getting creases and bubbles in the palm is to break in the heel first. So break in that heel, and then you can start squeezing the glove and you'll see that you'll get almost no bubbles at all. Next up guys is the top of the glove. You wanna spread these fingers out just like that. Make sure that's nice and open. And then after you stretch the leather out and stretch the fingers out just like that, you wanna go back and take your mallet and beat the palm in. Because if you do too much of this pulling, the palm's gonna start to lift up. So you just wanna take your mallet and beat that little crease back in. Something else I like about the trapeze webs is that they break in pretty easily. Since the web is mostly lace, it doesn't take that long for you to just do this to it and do this to it on the other side. Do some of these, 
and some of these. Some of these. And the web will start to break in. And that's something else I really like about the trapeze webs. <sighs> All right, guys, one last thing I wanted to mention. For the love of God, if you're an outfielder, please at least put two fingers in the pinky slot. Like, you have no idea how many guys I know at the college level that just take their whole hand and just stick it in the glove and call it a day. I mean, if you want to do that and you feel comfortable, that's totally fine. But that's not always going to form the deepest pocket. As you can see, this glove is fully broken in. But if I go ahead and just do one finger in each pinky slot, if I close my hand, it's not an even closure and the pocket isn't as deep as it could be. Two in the pinky, if you're not used to doing it, do it, especially if you're an outfielder. If you're an infielder, it's a little bit different. It depends on the player, but in the outfield, do it because it's gonna ensure for a deeper pocket, better catches, better snags, and a better form of your glove. And it's gonna last a lot longer too. It's gonna help keep the form. So I broke this glove in tune the pinky, but after I used it for a long time, since it doesn't have a pinky loop right here, I can actually do three in the pinky. And then I move my other fingers over and that's even better. So this glove, I'm going to break in three in the pinky. It depends on the model that you want to use, but some models have a little bit wider uh, pinky slots. If this glove wasn't comfortable to go three in the pinky, I wouldn't do it. So again, if you don't feel comfortable doing three, just do two. And also something I noticed, if you stick your whole hand in the glove, it actually might make it a little bit harder to close. The reason being, if you stick your whole hand in a glove, the space you have to actually close your hand, and it makes no sense like if I'm explaining it this way, but when you stick your whole hand in the glove, the heel bends down and hits your hand sooner so there's no more space for it to actually close up top compare that to if i don't put my hand in all the way there's more space for the heel to actually bend down and move right there in that like space it's so hard to like get the angle there but uh yeah so more space for my hand to move therefore making it easier to close the glove of course, last but not least, the pocket. The best way to form any pocket on any glove is of course, like I've mentioned before, playing catch. You can use your mallet as a tool to help you form a pocket sooner so that when you go to play catch, you have somewhat of a pocket to mess around with. Also start doing this every time you... So I'm taking a little break from breaking in this glove. Here's what I got so far. Um, and something I wanted to actually mention to you guys is to loosen the fingers. There's two ways to loosen the fingers and that's by pulling them apart like that. Or what you could also do is literally just untie the knot at the end of the finger and just pull the, God, this is actually a little bit trickier than I thought. Untie this knot here at the end of the finger, pull with a set of pliers because it's probably gonna be too hard to pull with your hand. Um, take some pliers and just pull the lace through, pull it through here and then pull it through the back there all the way until you loosen all the fingers up. Okay, so about four days and three sessions of catch later with more breaking in with the mallet. This is what I got it to. And that's two in the pinky. With three in the pinky, pretty much comfortable to use this during practices and um, IOs. I don't think I can use this in a game yet, but that just goes to show that with just a little bit of perseverance, some catching and some mallet work, you can get your glove ready in a couple weeks. There's one last thing I wanna do though, and that is to trim the laces here on the back of the glove. I ordered this glove with long laces, so that's why they look like that. Um, kinda looks like a, like a glove medusa or something. Um, but I kinda want it to look, there's a baseball, I'm always dropping a baseball in every single one of my videos. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this is how I have the laces on my other trapeze glove. So I wanna do something a little bit similar. So I'm going to grab my my pliers, which have some wire cutters right here, um, like right under the plier part. Just gonna take my pliers and trim. Here it is now. Looks much better in my opinion, a little bit cleaner. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you leave a like, 
Comment what you guys want to see in future videos. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram at now and I post a lot of cool stuff there too. This video was a little bit longer than my previous ones lately. That's because I really wanted to go in depth on how to break in an outfield glove the right way. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. I really appreciate the support. Thanks, guys. See you later.